Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or seeking to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as clinical psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back. It's just me, Dr. Bernie, today. Um, now, we're not going to judge Dr. Marshall too harshly. He's got a very interesting story uh, that will explain why he's not here today to record this podcast with me, but but that, but but all is well. Uh, it'll be it'll be great when he is is here, so that we can continue the conversation that I'm going to kick off today. Where this for the rest of this week, we're going to focus on five of the primary or five big continua that we think about when it comes to personality. Now we've talked about personality disorders a little bit before, so we're not really talking about personality disorders per se. Uh, when we think about personality, we're thinking about that sort of underlying basic, basic uh, pervasive, ongoing way in which you sort of see, interact, and interpret the world around you. Now, most of us, well, most of us are relatively unconscious of our personality traits. I mean, we certainly know if we're extroverted or introverted, and we certainly know certain things about ourselves when we are asked about it or we actually sit down and think about it. But when it comes to other areas, we just are what we are. And interestingly enough, many people seem to believe that however they are, they just sort of assume that other people are the same way. Now, this becomes much more of a problem when we're talking about personality disorders, of course. But when it comes to some of the traits that we're going to talk about throughout the week this week, that certainly is the case as well. But I'll save that for some of the conversation when Dr. Marshall's here so we can kind of uh, go into a little bit more detail there. But today, I'm going to focus primarily on the first uh, continuum that we're going to address for this week, and that is the continuum of freedom and determinism. Now, when we think about this continuum, many of us, well, m- many of us get stuck a little bit because we like to think both ways a little bit. Let me tell you what I mean. So on one end, we have freedom. And, and many of us believe and, and choose to believe and want to believe wholeheartedly that we are uh, completely free to make whatever decision we want to make. Uh, we want to believe in free will. We th- There are uh, fundamental uh, beliefs in free will. There, there are religious beliefs in free will. And, and we are really... Uh, much of our overall worldview is based upon the idea that people choose to behave the way that they choose to behave. That it is more or less a choice. We have we have that free freedom to, to make the choices that we want to make. Now, now, the other end is determinism. And what that means is that we believe that there are external forces. There are other things, unconscious things, that determine or, or make decisions or, or lead us to doing different things or sort of guide us down a particular path. Now, both ends sound, um, one can make an argument for both ends. Free will, you know, again, there's sort of that fundamental belief. But when it comes to determinism, you know, the, the belief in fate, the belief in, you know, happenstance, the things that, that things are just happened the way that they're supposed to happen. In fact, we spend a lot of time in psychology talking about that, especially self-help books. Everything happens for a reason. It is sort of based upon the idea that determinism, that things happen that are outside of our control, but they happen to make us, you know, to guide us down a particular path or to make us behave or, or to do things in a particular way. So, we have free will or, or freedom on one end, and we have determinism on the other end. And what I would like for you to think about is where on this spectrum do you fall? Where on this spectrum would you think that you fit? Are you the type of person that believes more in free will? Because if you do, when you're interacting with other people, when you're engaging in relationships with other people, when they do something that upsets you, that you don't agree with, you're going to evaluate them. Or I don't. I was trying to avoid the word judge because many of us don't like to work, don't really like the word judge. 
but that's what we're doing. We're judging them based upon their actions. But if we're if we are on the more freedom end of that spectrum, we're going to see those behaviors as a choice and we're going to evaluate that person accordingly. We're going to say they chose to do that. They chose to make those decisions and to do those things, even though they probably knew that it would hurt my feelings or that it would you know, lead to a bad outcome, but they chose to do it nonetheless. And we would evaluate them in that way. Now, in a similar situation, but if you were more on the deterministic end of the spectrum, you may be one to believe that, well, you know what, things just happen sometimes. Um, nothing you can do. I'm sure that there was something else going on around the same time that led to you making that decision or that sort of influenced or, or guided your behavior at the time that led to you doing that or choosing not to do that, whichever the case may be. So our evaluation of the person is going to be very different. And so this affects our relationships. And like I said, you know, at the start of the podcast, when we think about personality, we're really thinking about the way in which we interact and interpret and, and see basically the world around us. I mean, it, it is quite literally a, I guess, a lens through which we see the world. So when we think about, you know, looking at the world through rose colored glasses and things like that, what we're talking about uh, in just a little bit is, is optimism and, and looking at, at things positively. And that's not one of the continuum that we're going to talk about this week, but it, that's another sort of fundamental aspect of who you are. Either you're optimistic or you're pessimistic. Now, you can work really hard to be more of one or the other. You can also work really hard or have different life experiences that may influence you to lean towards one direction versus the other. But at some fundamental level, the way in which you see the world is sort of there. It's, it's not something that you're going to change in a considerable and, and market and, and permanent manner. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a range in which you might adjust it, but from the, for the most part, you, know, you, you are the person that you are. That's based upon your temperament from when you were a child all the way up through all the life experiences you had growing up. So bringing us back to freedom versus determinism, if you are the type of person who believes that we are in complete control, that uh, we have free will, and that we can make any decision that we choose to make, then let me ask you this question. How is it that um, we make change? You know, when we are in complete control and we have the opportunity for free will and we can make any decision we want to make, is it easier or more difficult for you to make change? So if you have that capacity to, um, to make any decision that you want and to do whatever you want from the free will perspective, is it the, is it the um, situation then where you can make any change that you choose to make? And therefore, if you don't make a change, if you, you know, have a difficult time with those New Year's resolutions that are probably for most of you out there have already kind of gone by the wayside. But if you are the type of person who set a New Year's resolution, did you, were you able to stick with it? Uh, I, I would find that very interesting to know. I, I haven't really seen any research about that. But I think it'd be really interesting to know if a person is much more on the freedom end of this spectrum if you are more likely to stick with decisions that you make for change. And if you don't, is that because you didn't really want to make the change and were thinking that you wanted to make the change? Or is it because perhaps you're not as far down that freedom or free will uh, end of the continua than you otherwise would be? Now, if you're on the deterministic end, I think the change comes in a very different way. Change in that situation comes from having to really organize yourself and really create a, a environment and a setting in which you can make the changes and sort of the, the environment is primed for the change that you want to make. Uh, a person on the Freedom Inn should be able to have a, a, a six pack of um, cupcakes. I wasn't going to say beer, but a six pack of cupcakes on the table and not eat any of them because you have free will and you have the capacity not to eat them. The deterministic person may say, hey, if they're there, I'm, I'm probably going to eat them. But these external forces, 
that I'm going to that I'm going to work to manipulate to help me make the change. I'm just going to make sure that there's no cupcakes there because uh, you know things happen, and if I, if I'm there, uh, I might just have to eat one. So the deterministic end may have to arrange the environment in such a way that these again external forces act upon them in a way to help them make the changes that they want to make. So this is why it's a little bit important, or maybe a lot important, to, to evaluate yourself and see if you can figure out where on this spectrum you fall. Most of you will fall somewhere in the middle. You will feel that there's some times when you have complete control, and that there are other times when you don't. Most decisions do fall in the middle. I think everyone would agree that you could absolutely quit your job tomorrow if you wanted to. But you also know that if you quit your job tomorrow, there would be some external forces that would act upon you, namely the mortgage company or your landlord or someone like that who would want to get paid uh, for the next month's rent. That external force would act upon you and influence you to behave in a different way. So sure, you could absolutely quit your job tomorrow if you wanted to. There you are on the freedom end. But external forces would act upon you from the deterministic end. And so we find ourselves, most of us are somewhere in the middle. And knowing for what things you're in the middle and what things you may, again, be on either extreme is really important because it's going to kind of guide and influence and direct you on how you're going to behave in different circumstances. So that's about it for today. Uh, we're going to get into more detail. We may even talk about this one a little bit more tomorrow when Richard's here. But again, I, I want you to begin the, uh, begin the process of, of thinking about some of these aspects of you. Uh, are you more on the freedom end or more on the deterministic end? And the ones that are coming up, things like rationality versus irrationality. Are you the type of person that feels that people behave in rational, tend to behave in rational uh, thoughtful ways, or are people generally irrational and they just really respond and, and engage in things based upon whatever emotion that they're experiencing at the time? There's several others that we're going to talk about this week. And so if you look, check out the show notes, you'll see the different, the, the five different continua that we'll be talking about. And I would encourage you, I'd love to hear from you to see what you think about them. What do you think about how you fall on this, um, on this these different continua, because where you fall is going to influence how you interact with others, how you feel about yourself, and what you think about yourself as it relates to making changes and maybe even important changes that you need to make in your life. So, all right, that is it for me for today. I will be back tomorrow with Richard for the next episode, and I hope that you have a terrific day and a terrific evening, and I'll see you in the morning. Until then. Have a, uh, <laughs> until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid.